Hey everyone, today I'm going to be doing a show and tell about a machine that I have something of a checkered history with. So the clue being in the title of the video, the machine we're going to be looking at today is this one that you see in front of you. Its name is a ball and beam machine. Now if you've never studied engineering before, you've probably never seen one of these machines, but they're very commonly used in educational purposes for teaching the concepts of something called control theory. I mentioned a second ago that I had something of a checkered history with this machine, and in fact the first time I ever tried to build one of these was around about eight years ago when I built one for my final year project for my thesis in college. Let's talk about how this machine works. At its most basic it comprises of a ball sitting on a beam, as the name would suggest. The goal of this machine is to keep the ball balanced at some set point along the length of the beam. Now this doesn't have to be the very center, but for the example we're going to look at today, let's just assume that the machine will always balance the ball right in the center. Mechanically, what this machine does is pretty simple. The beam itself is allowed to rotate around a fixed point at its center, meaning that the beam can move up and down freely at either end, and the ball can move left to right along its length. In this design, the rotation is provided by a stepper motor, which drives a set of belts and pulleys that rotate the beam along its central pivot axis. With all that said, let's have a look at how it works. Now, I know this isn't terribly exciting, but in my defense, I never claimed it would be, and you are the one who clicked on this video. So, you know, who's to blame here? I kid. It might not be terribly exciting, but I hope at least it's in some way interesting. What you're seeing here is the machine is performing a task called disturbance rejection. So that is, my hand comes in, I flick the ball, it adds a disturbance to the system, and the machine then compensates for that disturbance by getting the ball back to its set point, which you said earlier was always going to be the very center. What we're seeing here is the mechanical design for the drivetrain of the machine. In the original build of this I did years ago, I motor mounted the motor shaft directly to the shaft that um, the beam pivots on which is not really a great design. So when I was designing this one, I decided to um, take advantage of some mechanical advantage I can get from using some different size pulleys to link together the motor and the shaft that rotates the beam. Okay, so let's talk about the electronics a little bit. So this little guy you see here with the heatsink on top of it, this is the stepper motor driver. So this little circuit takes control of the actual control signals that get sent to the stepper motor, and um, which makes it uh, work. <laughs> and then this guy is the uh, microcontroller. So this this is pretty much the brain of um, of the entire machine. Uh, the control algorithm that controls the whole thing is is built in here, and this guy communicates with this guy to drive the stepper motor itself. Uh, there's a capacitor here uh, on the input on the power supply and this whole thing is uh, powered by just a normal 12 volt uh, wall work power supply here. Uh, the microcontroller itself actually takes its own power supply. Um, I could have uh, had you know just a step down converter to take the 12 volts to put it down to 5 volts for this but I didn't really see much point in doing that because most of the time you're going to want this connected to a computer anyway to look at the outputs like the graphs and things like that was the idea that I had so didn't see much point. Uh, the only other things of note on the um, electronics uh, inside here, it's kind of hard to see, but bolted to the front of this motor is what's called an optical encoder, um, which is part of the feedback system here. You can see the wires coming off of it. Uh, so the final part of the electronics of the system are the sensors that actually detect the position of the ball. So that's done by these uh, little optical position sensors here. There's one on uh, either end. So this is an example of the machine performing uh, disturbance rejection with the output of the ball plotted live on the screen for you. So you'll see as my hand comes in, I flick the ball, it starts moving, and you can see the ball position I put it on your screen there. So you'll notice at the start, the ball position, the amplitude is higher, the oscillation, then as the machine dampens those oscillations, you'll see them get smaller and smaller and smaller until it comes back to its steady state position, which is back at the center. That's about it for this video. If you've liked what you've seen, you can find a link in the description to an in-depth article that I wrote on my website about this machine. And as always, if you like the content that I'm producing and you'd like to help support it, you can also find a link to my Patreon.
Thanks for watching.